Good evening, friends. This is Rahul Magan here is a Group Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting and also a Venture Capitalist. Today, we're going to shoot about a very dedicated topic of 20-25 minutes about the our banking information technology architecture. I very well understand that if you open the Google and check that what exactly is an information uh, information technology, now we shortly term this as an IT, IT architecture, there is no relevant topic, which no relevant content which, which we have in the market. And I think it should be. The reason being banks don't share their information technology architecture in the public domain because they think that if they share that might be leaked out or maybe that might be copied. But anyways, you know that we are from the banking background. We are here to give you a lot of about the information technology architecture. Now, let me elaborate few points of the information technology architecture. Now, according to me, the bank information technology architecture varies from bank to bank. We need to appreciate that if I take all Singaporean banks like DBS, UOB, OCBC, or if I take the top American banks, which is Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, and Chase, then their information technology architecture is different. And it has to be. We need to understand that the requirements for the, the, the Singaporean banks and the requirements for the Goldman Sachs are completely different. So it has to be. So take an example. You know, if you are having a vehicle, or somebody else having a vehicle, the requirement for both are different. You maintain your vehicle in a very different manner, right? So example, the vehicle of an American presidency, Donald Trump, would it's a bulletproof. It might be, I don't know what not. It is completely proof vehicle, right? You know, and uh, until unless a meteor will fall on that vehicle, there is no damage to Donald Trump. But that is, these all credentials are not there in BMW. So we need to understand that the banks at IT architecture are of following types. Number one, they maintain a consortium kind of architecture. So what is consortium type of architecture, which is that like Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs maintain a consortium type of architecture. So big banks like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Chase, they divide the globe into multiple parts. Example one is Southeast Asia, which is Singapore. One is uh, Asia, which might be you consider this as an India. One is Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Southern Europe, Northern Europe, Central Europe. Then you have US. The same is for US and then you have the Latin America. What they do rather than having the information technology architecture at the same place, they divide the world into multiple forms. And this would have their own pros and cons. I think this is having more pros than cons. Pros means positive, cons means negative. Another kind of architecture banks maintain is the standalone architecture like ICICI bank, like Yes Bank, what they do, they maintain their information technology architecture differently in different companies. I am strictly against that, considering that banking industry is moving from regulation, a lot of job cuts are going on, the margins are getting very less, the big banks like UPS, UBS, and uh, your, uh, you know, uh, big banks like UPS, they are, they are cutting almost $300 million of cost, 300 million euro of cost, a lot of action is happening. I don't think the model of having standalone information technology architecture is the right model. One kind of architecture which banks are now coming slowly, slowly is on AWS, Amazon Web Server. But they are outsourcing their information technology to the trusted companies like Amazon. But there are very little case studies which we have in that regards. We don't have much case study to sub sub substantiate. And with due respect, without quoting the in name of an Indian bank, we just got to know that there are many Indian banks which we have, those who have started talking AWS because they do some ABC, which is, uh, uh, they sorry, they, they did some CBA, which is cost benefit analysis. And they got to know that this is relatively cheaper, but I have little disagreement on that. Since this is product is from Amazon AWS, so I'm not giving any comment, else I would have shared my comment, you know. Now, in every banking architecture, there are number of items. These are the types of architecture. One is the consolidated, different parts, which Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Chase maintain. One is the standalone, which Indian banks maintain. Some European banks like Standard are also maintain. You know, one is the own AWS. Here, Indians are an example, but I'm very sure I have no substantiation. I cannot tell you the name because, you know, our network, our network should have the secrecy. It should have professionalism. In every banking architecture, you have huge, numerous amount of project about products and software. So let's talk about product first, software later. When you talk about the product, you need to appreciate that they have the following products. One is ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Now, Enterprise Resource Planning is an end-to-end -end integrated platform which covers everything from HR, payroll, finance, PICO, accounting, TMS, it covers everything. 
that's an unfortunate part that that sap do not sap tms which is treasury management system module is not widely used compared to the the murex and calypso so it's erp and erp is generally consolidated it's have one server so even if goldman sachs would have five or six it architecture or five or six uh, you know i would say the data centers in the globe they have one standalone erp that's for sure because the cost is very high multiple licensing cost uh, goldman sachs cannot afford no bank can afford because they charge heavily per license cost to be honest then is the tms treasury management system although i am not saying that treasury management system license cost is very small it's relatively very big like murex costing not less than 5 million dollars calypso is also a multi million dollar product how much efficiency murex and calypso adding in your system that is always a point of contention and i am always saying that murex and calypso both are adding nothing in your system it is better that you should not take that product but anyways this is a separate discussion now what happens that these treasury management systems are well integrated with your e with your erp in books in paper but the ground reality is far different ground reality this tms and erp are not the only systems bank maintain banks maintain multiple kind of tms god knows how they are maintaining this why they are wasting so much amount of time money effort and everything but they are doing that anyways then the the question is the integration of the tms and the erp this is not happening but let me give you an example of the best banks like goldman sachs they have their own fx engines sorry fx engines will come after one minute before that the next item is the feeders there is nothing much you need to do in the feeder that is a proprietary software from reuters and bloomberg you just need to take and you need to integrate with your tms so ultimately how it should happen tms should integrate with the sorry feeder either reuters or bloomberg should integrate with tms and tms should integrate with erp but what is the hard reality of the life and i can give you in writing hard reality erp is separate tms is separate feeder is separate now banks like goldman sachs those who are pretty big and they are dealing everything what they did they actually created something which is a prop system prop system is our parlance known as proprietary system they created a prop system which is known as fx engines and this fx engine can easily interlink with with feeders and believe me gs fx engine is brilliant i have to say thank you to the goldman sachs thank you to the ex leadership mr blankfin they made it happen i don't want you to name any indian company any indian bank who tried to create fx engine but they drastically failed not failed drastically failed and end result they shelled it off but blankfin made it happen it's a salute to you boss you made it happen it's a pretty complicated case it's all about leadership how how you do apart from that move further the banks have multiple systems which runs their branches multiple proprietary software which runs their branches unfortunately these proprietary systems are now getting winded up and they are coming on the cloud like there are multiple conferences seminars and all these events happening out at singapore whereby these cloud services are coming up but apparently still speaking standard in singapore we need to appreciate that this has just started it has not reached to the top it has just started so we don't know we don't know it about it has just started apart from that the very important thing which these banks do have in the information technology architecture which is your servers which is your computers your laptops your tablets your mobile phone what not they all are subject to an information technology audit using two techniques which is ssa 16 soc 16 and also cobit generally banks are ssa 16 and ssa 16 is not the only framework actually there are there are multiple iso standards in place we'll shoot a separate video on that or they are good they have to have audit in place you know because elsewise lot of transaction is happening here and there to be honest apart from that there is one important thing which banks maintain which is the reporting architecture and that reporting architecture is happening via a separate terminal now i would like without quoting the name of an american bank i want to tell you that most of the american bank are maintaining separate reporting architecture and this is i fail to understand how boss you have erp you are paying i think in indian terms also you are not paying less than uh less than 500k yeah 
लेस देन फाइव हंड्रेड के यूएस डॉलर पर लाइसेंस एस एपी यू हैव यूर एक्स सिस्टम विच कॉस्टिंग नॉट लेस देन फाइव बिलियन यूएस डॉलर कैलिप्सो इज ऑल्सो कॉस्टिंग वाई हैव अपरेट रिपोर्टिंग आर्किटेक्चर यू लेट मी नो एंड दिस सेपरेट रिपोर्टिंग आर्किटेक्चर इज सब्जेक्ट टू सब्सटेंशियल कॉस्ट इन द बैंकिंग आर्किटेक्चर सो एग्जाम्पल सिक्स वन जीरो If 610 is coming now, let's take an example of any say, any American bank like Goldman Sachs, which is having very active presence in the in the institutional market in Singapore. Their reporting architecture is subject to change because of 610, because of FRTV, because of uh, you know upcoming Basel III framework, and there are a lot of changes happening every day. So banking and third come, which is the consolidation architecture. You would be surprised to know that most of the banks are not using ERP. What they 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 were supposed to use? You would be surprised to know that. You would be surprised to know that the consolidation in the in 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 the banks are happening. I mean, most of the banks are happening outside ERP. I know I'm sounding like an idiot, but being from the banking, I would be surprised to know that consolidation is happening outside outside ERP. I have the name of the few European banks whose whereby I have a strong. uh information that their consolidation happening outside the market and moreover the worst of our worst we have few banks in the globe where the regulatory reporting which is known as reg reporting regulatory reporting reg reporting is happening via different system i think to wind up this video we need to understand two things in place number one the bank information technology architecture needs an urgent revival not updation revival i think the way the cost is coming down everything coming on the blockchain let me give you a simple example of a singaporean banks us bank all are included in this example mobile wallet 10 years before if you need to transfer any money you need to do the tt or you need to go to the bank for a transaction that transaction might take one day two day or in case of singapore might take few hours right but now what are you doing you opening your mobile and using the wallet right and you are transferring the money now paytm is an example of that the question is who lost the business banks banks are losing business at a very considerable pace the reason is very clear they are not adapting the market technology and one important thing which we know in the life if you don't if you if you, if you let problem bigger then the problem will come on you alternatively speaking what important thing which i i want to tell you about is that banks needs to understand that this it architecture is is 1980 architecture this is not 2019 architecture most importantly we also need to understand that systems like tms has to be winded down immediately and they should be replaced with the fx engine i fail to understand that why the the banks which i am naming apart from goldman sachs which is jp morgan chase standard chartered hsbc ubs barclays bank of america and all why they don't have their fx engine city why we are relying on murex why we are relying on calypso you tell me one thing So you are paying multi million per license cost on these treasury management system tell me are you not paying that is it murex is charging or the calypso is charging few thousands of dollars per license no my question is if the banks spend one time these multi million in creation of their own fx engine which can easily be linked with the feeder anyways what is tms this is an apple iphone iphone x can it work without internet It's a fantastic phone by Apple. I thank you to Mr. Jobs for make that phone. But can it work without internet? Definitely not. We need an internet. And what is that internet? This is Feeder, Reuters or Bloomberg. Then why don't I? Why don't I made you know my own FX engine? Why do I spending multi million dollar cost in the treasury management system when I can make the FX engine? And I can reduce the cost. I think bank information technology architecture needs urgent revival. and if this urgent revival won't happen then blockchain is coming other participants are changing the technology banks have left with only thing they will fire people we just saw that ubs cutting down almost 300 million euro cost and nomura which is winding up uh, sorry reducing cost by 1.1 billion dollar but at the same time i would like to suggest all the banks rather than cutting the jobs you should link to revive your banking or art it architecture it's it sounds tough but it is not dependency should not be there now this is the first part of the video we shoot it and uh, the next part of the video would be coming when we let you know that how the banking it architecture is not competent or sync with ms 610 or 
the upcoming regulations like FRTV, upcoming regulations like Basel 3. I repeat, we let you know how it is not in sync with the upcoming regulations like MA610, FRTV and Basel 3. With this, Treasury Consulting, thank you very much. You know our mobile number 919899242978. You know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global. Thank you and have a wonderful time ahead.